Let's talk about hypokalemic periodic paralysis. So hypokalemic periodic paralysis is characterized by episodic muscle weakness. The most common gene mutation is in the dihydropyridine sensitive calcium channel in skeletal muscle. Less commonly, the sodium channel can be affected or SCN4A. The pathogenesis for why this calcium channel mutation causes the hypokalemic periodic paralysis is unknown. For clinical features, the symptoms start in childhood or adolescence. It's characterized by repetitive attacks of generalized weakness lasting minutes to days, though typically it lasts hours. There's no loss of consciousness and respiratory and bulbar function is relatively spared. The attacks can be triggered by activities that release epinephrine, such as after a heavy workout, or insulin, such as after eating a big carbohydrate-laden meal. And these activities can result in shift of potassium intracellularly. It makes sense because these are the strategies that typically will treat hyperkalemia in the short term. Unlike hyperkalemic periodic paralysis, there is no myotonia. For evaluation, during an attack, the potassium level is typically low, and it can be normal in between attacks. Genetic testing, if the diagnosis is suspected, can confirm the diagnosis if they have one of the common mutations. Thyroid function testing is done to evaluate for secondary causes of periodic paralysis, such as hyperthyroidism, and similarly for other workup for secondary hypokalemia will include a blood gas, serum and urine electrolytes. A EKG can be done uh, which will be consistent with low potassium. It can show ST depression or TU merging, and it can also suggest Anderson syndrome if the QT is prolonged. The ictal EMG can show decreased CMAP amplitudes and reduced motor unit recruitment. For treatment, if potassium is low during an attack, it can be given orally to abort it. Mild exercise can also help. To reduce the frequency of attacks, a low carbohydrate diet and avoidance of vigorous exercise are recommended. First line medication treatment can include carbonic anhydrase inhibitors such as acetazolamide and dichlorphenamide, and this can help reduce the attack frequency. They also tend to work better in individuals with the calcium channel gene affected as compared to the sodium channel gene. For prognosis, attacks tend to become less frequent over decades. However, later on, a progressive proximal myopathy can develop.